The title of my talk is Ethereum is Punk. And I think the first category of punk that Ethereum is, is cypherpunk. So basically, a cypherpunk is anyone who is advocating for strong privacy in cryptography and especially sovereignty in their digital systems. And this serves as a route to social and political change, decentralizing power into the hands of the individual. Ethereum is cypherpunk. And if you want to know about the roots of the cypherpunk movement, you can read the cypherpunk manifesto, which is a canonical piece of text from Eric Hughes. It's uh, really very prescient, considering it was written in the 90s. The second category of punk that I think is really interesting and has only really developed over the last couple years is this idea that Ethereum is solar punk. So solar punk, I think, is our alternative to doomerism. In a world with rising coordination failures like climate change, rising autocracy, misinformation, breakdown of the international order, we now have a transparent, immutable, programmable, and global structure for coordinating. We just need that key that unlocks the ability to build new institutions, humanity coordinating at web scale. And that is how Ethereum makes, becomes solar punk. So if we want to make Ethereum good for the world, first we have to do no harm. And I'm really proud of the merge and the fact that the network is nearly carbon neutral. I think we have a little bit of work to do to get rid of the, rid of the scams on the network. But from there, we can use this programmable substrate to build better coordination hyperstructures that can do things like track carbon credits and start to solve climate change, but also can track impact on any other vector. So Ethereum is a coordination substrate that it gives us the ability to coordinate at web scale. And a lot of these problems can be framed as coordination failures. I also uh, recommend that you read the Solarpunk Manifesto. This one's not nearly as influential as the Cypherpunk Manifesto. But uh, there's, a there's a few different solar punk manifestos. Basically, solar punk is a movement in speculative fiction that imagines what the world would look like if we solved our contemporary problems around sustainability and uh, coordination failure. <clears throat> so solar punk is an art movement that envisions how the humanity might look if we've succeeded in solving our major contemporary problems with, with coordination, with an emphasis on sustainability and things like climate change. Cypherpunk is the, uh, the value system of sovereignty and privacy. And there's a blending of the two that has really been developing a lot over the last couple years. So Ethereum is punk, Ethereum is solar punk, Ethereum is cypher punk, and since these things are not mutually exclusive, Ethereum is also lunar punk. So lunar punk is regarded as the sibling aesthetic of the solar punk aesthetic, uh, has more universal properties such as like witchcraft, futuristic design, nature, renewable energy. And you can kind of think of like uh, it being solar punk with an emphasis on sovereignty and privacy or cypher punk, but with an emphasis on solving coordination failures, a uh, middle ground between the two. Ethereum is lunar punk. And I would really encourage you, if you're looking for a canonical piece on Lunar Punk, to check out this video, Lunar Punk and the Dark Side of the Cycle, that went viral about a month ago. I think that Lunar Punk is good because it's solving coordination failures and it's blending our safer punk values and our Lunar Punk values. <clears throat> There's another interesting alt of punk that I, I think that many in the room haven't heard of. I only know about it because I get tagged in every Twitter conversation about this stuff. <laughs> um, and it's called TerraPunk. So basically, the idea behind TerraPunk is, uh, is taking solar punk and looking at the art and realizing that there's not a lot of humans in it. And, uh, and basically, if you look at solar punk and you assume that we're going to solve our contemporary problems with coordination with it, then you're going to, uh, then are we going to do that in an accelerationist way where humanity continues to scale? Uh, along with our economies, or are we going to do it in a way that you assumes that 90% of humans aren't there? And so I don't necessarily agree with this interpretation of solar punk, but I do think that terra punk as a way of expressing solar punk, but with a more like high growth, high human way of doing solar, uh, solar punk is kind of interesting. <clears throat> 
I think that what I get from all of these different variants of punk and what I get back from the tweets that I, that I sent out is that Ethereum is a mirror. And what we build on Ethereum is an expression of the programming capabilities of Ethereum, but also the mirror of our values looking back at us through these systems. So Ethereum is all of these things. Ethereum is a coordination technology, and it's all coordination. All of our human systems and meeting our shared needs involve the coordination between people in these systems. <clears throat> Ethereum is a shelling point for the hopeful, a transparent, immutable, programmable global substrate for finance and coordination. And since we can program our values into our money, Ethereum is going to be a shelling point for people who are creating new coordination systems. Using Web3, we can build new coordination mechanisms that leverage collective intelligence to solve some of humanity's most pressing coordination problems. Through my work at Gitcoin, which leverages quadratic funding, we have become an uh, aqueduct for funding within the space, and we do $3 million worth of funding to the communities in the Web3 ecosystem using the magic coordination technology that is Ethereum and also the quadratic funding mechanism that distributes value to communities. So far, Gitcoin has delivered $69 million worth of funding to our digital public goods. This graph is an expression of uh, the community's preferences for what they're funding. So every edge in the network is a transaction and every node is a grant or a user. And this is a mesh network of the pre preferences of the Ethereum community and which public goods they care about. So we're building coordination technologies to fund the public goods that, we're, that we care about. Our vision at Gitcoin is to hopefully take ourselves to the quadratic lands, a place where we've rewritten the laws of economic gravity to support public goods and prevent coordination failures and to do it in a privacy preserving way. Ethereum is a mirror that reflects back to us our values, and this is our vision of where we want to go. You can kind of think of how much we're able to realize our values as a heuristic function in a fitness landscape, and we're executing the search space asynchronously and all together of finding the global maxima of how much we can realize our collective value realization using collective intelligence to allocate our commons resources. We were building hyperstructures, institutions in the ether that are able to meet our shared needs and, um, and are deployed on smart contract technology. And the sum of all of the hyperstructures out there, are th they form a meta hyperstructure, which is a, uh, a set of hyperstructures that all interoperate with each other in a modular way and help us to realize our shared values. So what I'm saying is Ethereum is cypherpunk, Ethereum is solarpunk, Ethereum is lunarpunk, Ethereum is also TerraPunk. We are the ones who we've been waiting for, regardless of whether, whether of these visions you believe in. <clears throat> so let's coordinate and let's build the world that we want. Thank you.